Hello, Internectuals. I have exciting news for me, um, and possibly you. I'm going to get a rhinoplasty, a nose job. It's currently May. I'm going to get it done in August. So in three months. Okay, so we're three months out. I have always wanted a nose job. Ever since I was like eight years old, I think. I don't know. A small... A small human and I finally decided to do it I've been watching a lot of nose job videos to show the process but I haven't really seen a lot that were that like showed the decision process and I meant to film this like right whenever I decided to do it because um, I feel like there's such a I mean obviously like with plastic surgery there's like a, a, a stigma with it because people are like oh my god you're so vain how could you want to change your body. That's how you were made. It's natural. You know what else is natural? H hating yourself. <laughs> hating the way that you look. Thankfully, I've never had anyone point out, oh, your nose, oh my god, it's awful. That bump, it comes out too far. You have like a little like butt thing. Like I've never had anyone point out the issues of my nose or even mention my nose. Everyone's like, oh my god, your eyes are so beautiful. You have a a wonderful smile. I, I just, I feel like there's such a stigma around plastic surgery and deciding to get it. And I obviously am making this video. I don't care if people know that I am getting plastic surgery. I'm having a hard time telling people, like giving people a heads up. Hey, I'm gonna have a different nose in a few months. But like after the fact, I genuinely think that I'm not gonna care if people that haven't seen me in a while or people that do see me whatever and I haven't told them and they're like oh wow you have a different nose I'm just gonna be like yeah I got a nose job I'm a little hesitant to tell people because I'm scared that no not I'm not scared like I don't know what word to you worried I guess that they're gonna try and like change my mind but this is something that I'm doing for me it's such a weird thing to worry about I totally understand that like there's so much more important things in the world to worry about the the basis is I haven't had anyone <clears throat> I haven't had anyone tell me that I need a nose job or that my nose is ugly or say anything about it and I'm not doing this for anyone else I'm literally just doing it for me I'm not doing it so that I look like any specific person um, whenever I went into the consultation they were like can you provide us a picture and I told them, I was like, I would really rather not because I, I do not want to look like someone else. I just want the surgeon to look at my face, proportions, and give me a nose that just fits my face. Also talking about the consultation process and like how that went. I didn't get offended whenever the surgeon was like, okay, we should do this and this and this. Oh, what do you think of the butt? I didn't even think about that you just put another thing in my brain it wasn't like oh my gosh he said that I have a butt nose I don't, don't know how to think about that I wanted a button nose not a butt nose so I slightly forgot that I was making this I think I was talking about like being nervous about telling people but I bug I just told them I either said I'm nervous to tell you this but I have some exciting news or if I wasn't nervous I have some exciting news to like preface it that you're excited and you're not really like gonna take in that negative energy I guess but everyone took it pretty well no one has been like snotty about it which is kind of what I was worried about I think I'll, everyone's keeping their judgment on the inside which is nice I had my pre-op appointment it's a lot I'm not gonna lie like it's so much information at once it's kind of overwhelming like I don't really care how much um, research you do yourself once you get in there and then they tell you like everything that you can and can't do and what it's gonna be like after your surgery and what you're gonna have to do for like precautions and avoid and all that stuff and it's a lot they gave me vitamins and then prescriptions and the vitamins I started like two weeks before which honestly I feel great I stopped drinking coffee and there's I had coffee in almost a week um, I've been taking those vitamins and then there's like 10 for my my surgeon at least gave like 10 prescriptions that was not a fun CVS pickup I don't know I just it was weird I would say the weirdest thing is that I can't drink out of a straw for two weeks four weeks I can't remember saddest thing I can't run or be in the Sun for six weeks the rest of summer <laughs> 
I can't enjoy the rest of summer. It's fine. I did this to myself. I can't complain because I chose to do this. Oh, I've also been doing a um, an anti-inflammatory diet, which I mean, I'm like not bloated or anything. It's great. Honestly, may continue to do this afterwards. We're less than 24 hours before surgery. I it keeps hitting me in spurts. Like I'll, I don't know. I'll just remember that it's gonna happen. And then, especially earlier whenever I was getting ready and like looking at myself in the mirror. Oh my gosh, that's the last time that you're gonna have to see that thing. I mean, I guess I am nervous, but I'm an excited nervous. So that's just excitement. Hello, two day update. Um, I didn't feel like being on camera the day of or the day after. Is this, is this day three? I don't know how that works. My eyes are pretty bruised. I can't breathe through my nose still. I mean, I don't have any packing or anything in there, but it's just so swollen, like I can't breathe. My eyes, since they're swelling so much, I don't know if I can, if you can see, but like they're creasing right here. And this is gross, this is gr gr disgusting, but my eye boogers are collecting in there. And I didn't know that until this morning. So like two days worth of gunk. And anyways, I got a Q-tip and just like cleaned it out on both sides. And that was gross, but I have to do it. I am having to spit out a lot of blood. And that's not something that I was expecting or heard anyone else talk about. My throat really hurts from the breathing tube that they use like during surgery, which the anesthesiologist said beforehand that that could happen. I didn't really want to eat the first day. Pre-made a bunch of food that I, I knew was um, not going to cause inflammation or would help inflammation. So I made some smoothies. So that's literally all that I had the first day. I started eating like solid foods the second day as you can see i have my cast off now um i'm still bruised i'm still swelling ever so slightly in my nose so this is not like the final shape obviously did my eyebrows i could have done makeup but again like i want you to see this is almost two weeks post-op for me i feel like i didn't have like a terrible reaction bruising wise i seem to heal pretty quickly um i mean my nose is still broken but that's normal i personally never felt any pain probably because like i didn't swell so much there wasn't as much pressure put on um i did feel pressure and i still i do still feel pressure like right here kind of it seems to be getting better it is still like the more i talk the worse it feels just because it's like moving around and everything. But I did kind of want to touch on my diet during this whole process. So I was trying to do as much anti-inflammatory at the bare minimum, just stuff that would not cause swelling. So first, let me start with what I avoided. Refined carbs, such as white bread, pastries, like you know what carbs are unhealthy versus what are healthy. Um french fries, other fried foods, like super greasy stuff, sodas, and other sugary drinks, no red meat or processed meat, no margarine shortening or lard. Um, if I used anything of that sort, I used like actual butter, which even that I didn't. Anyways, okay. Um, and then caffeine, that was a big one. I did brown rice, chicken, I think I had like a couple eggs. I don't know. I don't really eat breakfast. Fish, but I waited a little bit until after surgery because you're not supposed to, they suggested that I not have fish oil. And then foods that are anti-inflammatory. So tomatoes, olive oil, spinach, salmon, tuna, strawberries, blueberries, cherries, oranges, raspberries, blackberries, grapes, broccoli, avocados, bell peppers, mushrooms, turmeric, dark chocolate, lemon, ginger, eggs, kiwi. Oh wait. Eggs aren't anti-inflammatory. They just don't cause inflammation. Don't know I had that on the list, but anyways. Pretty much just ate the same thing the whole time because I didn't want to, like, stress about food and be like, oh my gosh, what am I going to eat today? Especially with, like, drastically changing diet and not... I didn't want to stress about, like, oh my gosh, I have to avoid this, I have to avoid this, I have to avoid this. So I went to the store and, like, got enough food for... I think it was three weeks. I did pretty much the same meals the entire time. Um, in the morning, I would have 
glass of pineapple juice because that helps with bruising the bromelain in the pineapple. One glass in the morning, so like that would really all be all that I would have. Um, one glass with lunch and then one glass with dinner. And then throughout the day, I would drink um, lemon water. I would fill up, I have like a pint water bottle. So I would do one of those with lemon water and then just razor water after that. And then for lunch, I did brown rice, broccoli, bell pepper, mushroom, olive oil, balsamic vinegar. And then for dinner, I did... I was actually really, really proud of myself for this. So like, I don't cook meat. Um, it makes me nervous. So <laughs> I did get a uh, like pre-cooked shredded chicken, but I heated it up in a skillet, lemon juice, black pepper, and honey, and heated it like in that mixture. Oh my goodness. It was the best thing ever. A lot of the stuff that I made, I ate a lot better, like not even healthier, but just like tastier throughout this past week and then once I felt comfortable with having tuna I just switched out the chicken for the tuna which I used all the chicken that I bought and then like I just started using the the tuna that I had already bought um and then avocado and black beans and then I did brussels sprouts for a little bit because I had to let the avocados ripen so yeah I just like put brussels sprouts into the oven black pepper olive oil I think that was it. They were good because you don't want to do salt either for swelling. So it's not going to like cause inflammation, but it's not good for swelling or water retention, something. I don't know. Some of this information is like flowing together. <laughs> I would suggest doing your own information as well or own research as well and not just listening to me. But I hopefully this is like helping you think about what you would want to look up or research or. And then if I was hungry. I would do a smoothie with spinach, banana, honey, lemon, and then almond milk. I will say the first like three-ish days, I wasn't really that hungry. And then with having to take so much medicine, like you definitely, you want to eat so that you don't get sick. The office gave me a list of stuff that they suggested that I get beforehand and gel ice packs was one that I actually used gauze for like right after surgery which I got a pack of a hundred you don't need that much <laughs> which maybe you will I don't know I don't know I I wanted to have it just in case but anyways um gauze gel ice packs um antibacterial so I would suggest if you're a female if you have breastuses um get a zip bra so you don't have to pull it over your face and button or zip up shirts like I don't want to wear this I it's not pretty but <laughs> I would much rather wear this and not have to worry about like pulling something over my face at this point I don't know man I see videos where other people they immediately like they don't wear stuff like this and they just are careful I guess the first night was the weirdest experience ever I'm assuming that I slept whenever I got home because that entire next night I didn't really sleep like I slept maybe collectively an hour maybe I just kind of laid there and my dog was laying with me I'm, I'm sleeping in a recliner still with um, a neck pillow because I I'm a crazy sleeper I don't <laughs> I don't want to roll over on this thing. I just laid there the whole night. And then I think maybe like a couple of times I drifted off. It was weird though because it was like I was I was dreaming but I was awake. I would catch myself like actually saying words aloud. Like saying what I was thinking or saying like I would be in conversation with someone in these dreams I don't I feel crazy saying it right now but anyways I didn't really necessarily sleep that first night but I wasn't really that tired so or like but it was weird it wasn't like I was frustrated that I couldn't sleep I was perfectly content with just laying there with my eyes open in the dark staring at the ceiling I would suggest go ahead and pick out what you want to watch 
<laughs> like on whatever streaming service I'm currently on HBO and I finished out the nanny I started watching friends and eventually whenever I could like actually sit there and pay attention to something and not just kind of like oh what's going on I would suggest watching something that you're really familiar with so that you can like drift in and out of sleep but if you happen to wake up like you're not you're not lost like what's going on my recovery experience ha has not been bad at all i haven't really had any pain mental health wise like it hasn't been that weird which i am kind of surprised i have linked some videos below that i watched prior to my surgery that really helped um prior to me even definitively making a decision to get the surgery because i definitely don't think that this is this should be like a flippant decision that someone makes that they're just oh i don't like my nose i'm just gonna fix my nose or oh i don't like my eyes i'm gonna get an eye lift or my lip or my chin or i'm i hate having small boobs or i hate having a, a flat butt or a, a big butt or whatever whatever it is surgery should not be taken lightly the financial aspect of it the fact that you are being put under you are being cut into you are, if if you're getting a, a rhinoplasty like I did, you are having a bone broken, you are having nerves cut into. An animation, because I think if you're, honestly, if you're going to get a nose job or any plastic surgery, you should look up, like, what is going to happen to your body. If you can't stomach the fact that they're going to, even though, sure, you are going to be asleep, I still think that you need to understand what exactly is going to be going on during this surgery. There was one nose job vlog that I watched where it was like super emotional for someone to be seeing their nose for the first time which I kind of had a little bit of that but it was honestly the nurse that I had that took my cast off and it was just I felt rushed and like I couldn't actually it definitely was not as emotional as this individual next video um I think it is good to kind of get in your mind that nobody's perfect, not even a surgeon, and they may mess your face up. <laughs> they might. If you look at a surgeon's before and after pictures and they have 50 successful surgeries, you could be the one that they mess up. It's, it's good to know how you would proceed. So I am including just one person, not to like put a damper on the parade because this is a very exciting experience. This is a happy time, a nose job vlog of her recovery and she had a reaction to the cast and it, she showed like her experience there. So that was a funky thing that happened, not like anything having to do anything with her surgeon or her or anything that anyone else did. It was just like a freak occurrence. The girl that I think explains towards the end of her video really well why she got it, what plastic surgery means to her and what it could mean to other people. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask down below. Um, I'm in no way, shape or form an expert in plastic surgery. Um, this is my only surgery. If you have anything unkind to say, I will probably just delete your comment. If you have any genuine questions, feel free to let me know. Go follow my TikTok. I started posting a couple days ago with the new nose. I wanted to give myself like two weeks just to mentally prepare. <laughs> Plus wanted there to be a little buffer in case something happened. Instagram, I have graphics i post a, a new a new little i say graphic but they're i guess they're memes i don't know i've never been like a meme -y person but i guess they're memes yeah i'm posting a new meme every week and then on tiktok a new tiktok every day you have a wonderful time thank you for coming we're all a work in progress even me see work in progress all right bye